So good afternoon everyone. Uh, today, the, our topic to discuss about insulation and vapor. Uh, we already discussed about, discuss about the water assemblage system from the last class, which is the how you designing about the vernier system. But we more to discuss about uh, the function of the insulation and function of the vapor and then where you can add in the insulation and vapor in your water assemblage. So we're looking at the first the image in a case study building here. Um, I brought the one precedent project which I worked in a few years ago. You remember about this is a Case Western University dormitory building and then we'll look at the basic wall assemblage idea from the, this project. So you can just kind of uh, seeing the, this project first, you can see the metal crating for the, the finished material. But how are we actually considering to design the waterproofing membrane and then framing system here. So this project has the two phase. The phase one here, so I can just draw first. This is a phase one. And after a few years, the, the build this phase two project. So just kind of bring it out that these, the, the construction image you can see. So as you see that this construction photo, what do you think about the assembly? Then what is about the, this black material? You can see that this blank material, um, this is a waterproofing membrane. So we actually skip the exterior rigid insulation because about the budget and because we using the metal framing system to adding the, the insulation into the framing, the wall framing system. However, once again, when you're having the rigid insulation outside, of course, it is increased thermal performance. You have to be remember. Uh, but you can just kind of find out this is a waterproofing membrane and then we adding the, these the head channel system which is a channel system and then simply this the creating system the the click over the the channel so to the making out of these the exterior the aluminum paneling system over the the this metal channel system over the waterproofing membrane so let's talk about the basic consideration when you design the exterior wall. So we need to consider the structure system, weather barrier, the vapor barrier, and interior exterior finish, and thermal barrier. Okay. So we're looking at the, these consideration. First one, you need to be consider structure system, and second, the weather barrier, and third. Finish material, which is interior, exterior, the finish material, and then thermal barrier and the vapor barrier. Okay. Today we more to more to focusing on to discuss about the insulation and vapor barrier, but we don't wanna talk about this issue later. But what is about the structure system? Structure system hold the building up. This is a main skeleton to hold in the your project. The, the uptown phase two project, which is the Case Western, the dormitory building, we using the metal framing system, which is you can see the old metal structure, and the wall you can see the metal stud, and then we can you can also see the the slab, which is the flooring system. We using the metal decking system, okay? So you can choose in the proper the metal construction or wood construction or concrete construction depending on the project type you can choose in the proper the structure type for your project and then you have to be concerned about the weather barrier which is the waterproofing membrane to keep the water out keep the weather out it waterproof membrane in this layer the prevent the water and air leakage in use the permeable membrane between exterior finish and the sheeting. You remember the sheeting is cover board, right? So that's why I just keep asking you to memorize the drawing as we discussed from the brick banner and stone banner because I just keep talking about this system. But if you don't know about this system well, it is hard to understand about the, the terminology or it's hard to understand about the, what is about the layer by layer. So from this region, if you don't sketch, if you didn't sketching about this diagram yet, please sketch over and over and over to know about this banner system. When you know about this banner system, it's much easier to understand about this all consideration. Okay, this is all basically from the the 
the veneer wall system we discussed from the wall, the brick veneer and the stone veneer design. So when you see the, this waterproof membrane, this is a keep water out and then resist air and allow water vapor to the escape. So you can see the system here, this is the exterior creating. You can be brick or stone or the metal or terracotta. You can choose any creating material. This is a sheeting, right? You remember the cover board. Inside the cover board, you can see the metal stud or you can add in the wood stud. To protect the, this system inside, you have to be adding the, the interior wall system here, right? You remember about this. So inside finish and the sheeting and exterior finish. The between, you need to be adding the waterproofing membrane here to protect the weather, like a water and air penetrating through the, the this system, okay? And then exterior finish. Exterior finish depending on the design and budget, but this is a first layer to protect the water. So it means it have to be durable, but also consider about the aesthetic, right? So it, depending on the this design purpose, you can choose the proper material. But have to be remember, it is exterior creating. It means you have to protect the weather very well. So next one is thermal barrier. Insulation keep your space warm. So there is a five common thermal insulation material, which is the fiberglass, you can see here. The fiberglass is made out of finely woven silicone and glass powder. What do you think about the glass powder? And what do you think about the woven silicone? It is not great for the human body. And fiberglass is cheap material, cheap insulation material, but it's bad for the human body. So that's why it is not, a, it's not recommended using the, the heavy rubber space. From the this region, fiberglass is mostly using the storage or the mechanical room or the garage. It's mostly using for the known heavy rubber space. Next example, the mine the the mineral oil. Okay, see here, the mineral oil. The mineral oil is made by slag oil from the steel mill. Okay, it is safe for the human body. Next one is cellulose. The cellulose is eco-friendly material, and then it's pretty low R value, but still it's eco-friendly material. It means it's good for the human body. It's not good for this kind, okay for the human body. Next one is poly, polyurethane foam. It is excellent sound and temperature insulation material, okay? But uh, it's more expensive comparing to the other the insulation. It's mostly spray type, it means it is very easy to fit into any types of the wall, any foam wall, right? And the next one is polystyrene. It is mostly made by the straw foam, so which is the it is categorized XPS and EPS foam. So we talk about the, this foam the later of the, this lecture. The polyesterone, which is the blue foam here, it is the most popular the the insulation type. But there are some also disadvantages to use and advantages to use. We can talk about the, this the material the later of the, this lecture. Next one is the vapor barrier. The vapor barrier can be the mechanically passed in the sheet material, the self-adhering material, and membrane, and fruit applied material, and coating and pre-manufacturing the sheet over the insulation. I mean, there's lots of different insul the the vapor barrier type, but now you have to be understanding what is the difference between the vapor barrier and the waterproofing, which is the weather barrier. What is the difference between? What does the vapor mean? What is about the weather mean? You know what the weather means, right? That this is waterproofing membrane. It means it actually protects the water, direct the water from the outside. What about the vapor barrier? The vapor barrier, vapor, it is from the air. Air always contain the moisture, which is the vapor. So it means you have to be considered to protect the this vapor movement through the your water assemblage. Okay. So it means now you have to be catching the, these two idea. The weather barrier is protect the direct water like a rain or snow. The vapor barrier protect the vapor and moisture from the from the air. Okay. So we talk about the vapor barrier the later of the, this lecture and then w how you can add in the vapor barrier into the, your assemblage, okay? 
So now we just kind of back to the the wall assemblage type. So we talk about the, these two type here, depending on the the wood and metal framing system, wall framing system, and the concrete and CMU, which is a concrete masonry unit structure. Let's talk about the wood and metal stud. We already learned about the wood framing structure last semester. I hope you guys remember the this issue. You remember about the the platform framing and volume framing, what is difference and how you actually design in the the wood framing wall, right? So you can just find out here this is a frame of a wall. The metal stud, you can see the wood frame, wood stud, we already discussed. And then the metal stud is very similar as the wood stud. Of course, it had a little bit different the material type. And then it also had the, the different the aspect compared to the wood stud. But we talk about the metal stud and metal material the, in this module. So we talk about the, this type, this the material, the layer of the, this module. Okay. But anyway, just kind of understanding about the, this old framing system. And so this project, the Case Western University, the dormitory building, we using the, the metal framing system for the wall. So you see the here, this is uh, the symbol of the metal framing. But also you have to be know about the what, how you draw the metal framing symbol. This is a metal framing symbol. Okay. And then this one is the wood framing symbol. Please draw the proper symbol when I ask you to draw the metal framing or wood framing. Don't draw like this. This is another metal framing. Sometimes I ask you to the, draw the, the metal framing system in the exam. Some people just kind of draw the their own way, like that, like that. But it doesn't work, right? This is a universal language to using the, this one as the metal framing system. And then this one is the, the wood framing system. So anyway, let's look at the, this, the uptown phase two building or assemblage. We use the metal framing for the exterior structure and aluminum exterior creating system. You can see the this aluminum creating system. So we just, uh, we using the aluminum creating system for the exterior creating, and then you can see the we using the this metal framing system. But of course, you can replace the wood framing system. But simply, you can draw the wood framing. Okay, and the metal frame you can draw like this. And then, so we also have the, the insulation, okay, which is a wall insulation or the rigid insulation. You can have a insulation inside. Okay, of course, when you're having the rigid insulation outside, you can enhance the wall performance, which is a dumber performance. But we, we didn't adding it because about the budget. And then number four, so we're adding the waterproofing membrane. You remember about the cavity space and waterproofing membrane. Most water protected from here, but when water coming in, the water still can protect it from this second protecting layer. Okay? But you have to be more about understanding when you're having the wood framing system, the metal framing system like this, we mostly using the 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 paper type or membrane type. But when you have the this solid material like a concrete or CMU block, we usually mostly using the fluid and spray type. But here we using the metal framing. That's why it is mostly using the self-adhering sheet membrane, okay, which is the the paper type or the any different kind of membrane type we can using for the exterior. When you using the metal framing system or wood framing system. And next, next requirement is vapor barrier. You remember about the vapor barrier protect the moisture from the air. And the weather barrier the protect the water, which is a direct water from the rain, from the snow. But vapor barrier is from the protect the vapor, which is the moisture from the air. But we talk about the, this with the vapor barrier location later of this lecture. Okay, this is kind of our the basic ingredient to making out wood and metal stud. Okay, so wood and metal stud exterior wall. You need a structure system, which is a metal stud or wood stud. You need the insulation, and then you need a gypsum board, 
inside and outside you can add in the sheeting right and to protect this sheeting cover board you need a waterproofing membrane and then if you having the rigid insulation here but it's optional you can increase the R value you can in increase the wall thermal performance and then you need a creep system to the support the exterior creating design and then between the creating and sheeting we always provide air space it is we can call the lane screen space and the cavity space which is a lane screen system okay we already discussed about the the banner design and then please memorize the, this all sequence of the layer how you designing about the wall assemblage okay so i just already talked from the brick and the stone and i talked the today again so because this is a the most important part to understanding about overall world design okay next one is concrete and cmu which is the concrete masonry unit so of course you can see the concrete wall you can find and then this one is a cmu which is a concrete masonry unit in this case very similar as the wood framing and the metal framing wall design so you can see cmu block here and then to protect the CMU, this is CMU block, which is your the wall structure, and the adding the, the waterproofing membrane to protect the this the the CMU. The you just kind of need the waterproofing in this case mostly using the the spray type and paint type rather than the membrane type. Okay, and then you need to be adding the insulation here because the C, the concrete or CMU is hard it's impossible to put in the insulation inside of course there's another the sandwich panel in the concrete they were inside the concrete and adding the insulate rigid insulation and other the concrete type and then sandwiching the these two concrete and the insulation in the center of that and then sandwiching together it is sandwich panel but this is a little bit different the material type but we talk about this type later but mostly if you have in a solid concrete or CMU block you have to be adding the insulation outside mostly and then it protect the actual thermal transition between outside and inside and you can choosing the proper exterior material here but it is the detail of the, the terracotta and then between you just kind of holding the, this terracotta using the this crypt system anchoring into the this wall structure okay so this is a kind of main ingredient for the concrete and cmu wall you can have in the cmu which is a structural wall and adding the waterproofing membrane and adding the rigid insulation you can find out here and then waterproofing membrane here and then cmu block and then you can see the creep system which is making the some cavity space and the the terracotta system here so it means this is exactly it, not exactly it is similar as the wood framing and the metal framing system but the the layer is exactly the same as the the this the light framing system okay so once again i just diagramized to understanding about the the wall layering design interior you have to finish interior gypsum board and adding the insulation and adding the exterior sheeting which is the cover board to protect the weather and then you have to be adding the exterior panel which is the exterior the finish wall between space you have to be adding the waterproofing membrane and you between these you have to provide the cavity space cavity space why we have to provide this air space because when water coming in it is space to dry out the water easily and easy to getting out the water from the, the disassemblage but if this creating system and cover board put together is hard to getting out of the water so that's why you have to be separating it and then it is kind of getting out and flowing out of the water as much as possible from the this system and then you also need a vapor barrier which is the to protect the moisture transfer between outside and inside but vapor barrier is totally new concept we talk about this paper barrier concept later of the, this module, right? The, through the, this wall assemblage, 
always sound, dumber, vapor, and air transfer between interior and exterior. You have to be concerned how we protect these transferring between exterior and exterior. Okay, how we can control this factor. Okay, so insulation it is a one the layer can controlling the sound, the dormer and vapor and air. So you can see that this is a beautiful kind of house design. It's typical house design here. The building is enveloped by window, exterior wall, roof, and floor slab. It is all directly exposed to outside weather. So means always thermal transfer through the building envelope. Most of the thermal energy is lost through the building envelope. It means you have to be consider energy lost through the building envelope. Okay. The from the this region, you have to be provide thermal resistance layer for your envelope design. Okay, thermal resistance. Okay, so let's talk about the thermal resistance from the next chapter. So let's talk about the thermal resistance. It is the insulation layer, uh, insulation layer. It is for the protect the thermal the bridging between outside and inside. So how does insulation work? Okay, so when you see the insulation and then you can zoom in the insulation. Oops. You can just find that the last of uh, air pocket here. Okay, just see. You can see the last of uh, air pocket. Um, airspace, air pocket is the very efficient insulation material. The quantity of the airspace decide the insulation quality. It means if you have more the air pocket, it is it means it is better insulation. Okay, so from the distillation, insulation is made by the last of air pocket. So it means it is a thermal bridge between outside and inside. It is protect the thermal transfer between outside and inside. Okay, and so let's talk about the most common the insulation type in our industry, the EPS form first. It is the rigid insulation form and it is the cheap insulation and low R value. It is kind of a close to cell rigid form polystyrene plastic manufactured through the molding process. You don't need to be worried about the discomposition. Um, but you have to be considering about the what is the difference between XPS and EPS. We talk about XPS next slide. But the uh, EPS is cheaper than XPS. But XPS is a much better R value. R value EPS is mostly 3.6 to the 4.2. But you remember the better R value, which is the better performance. Okay, the higher R value means better performed the the system, which is a better performance. But this is this advantage. Combustible is easy to fire and a greater moisture absorption compared to the XPS. What is the problem when insulation absorbs the water? Actually, when the insulation having the water, this insulation factor is the decrease. Insulation performance actually the decrease. So from the this region, insulation have to be protect the the water moisture. Okay, so means air always moving from the air always containing the moisture, and then air moving from the Air was flowing through the, your the system. It means if air just meaning the warm layer, which is warm temperature, and then this moisture is changed to the water. It means this water infected the insulation factors. So we talk about this the factor the layer of this the class. But understanding the the EPS. It is kind of a greater moisture absorption. It means moisture can change water when they when air meaning the the hot temperature, higher temperature. So from the this region, this can the decrease the the insulation performance. But what about the XPS? So you can just kind of find out that XPS mostly you can see from the blue foam or pink foam, right? This is a resistant to the moisture, the sustainable for the protected membrane loop system and good R value. 
the XPS R value is 5.5 per inch but uh, compared to this one is higher R value it means better performance also is a good the moisture resistance so it means it is though you don't need to too much worry about the decreased performance from the the moisture okay however this is also combustible material means this is easy to fire right so let's watch the next video the comparing to the EPS and XPS that you better understanding about the, what is difference between The expanded polystyrene foam industry has stated their product, EPS, performs the same, if not better, than extruded polystyrene rigid foam insulation, or XPS. The emphasis is on performance, specific to R-value and moisture. But you only have to look at the science to see the truth. Science doesn't lie. Let's start with the differences in manufacturing. With the XPS continuous extrusion process, a homogeneous closed cell matrix is produced through the entire cross-section of the foam. This matrix of closed cells resists water penetration, and that's important because water penetration can reduce R value if absorbed into the insulation. With the EPS cell structure, the bead molding process leaves voids between beads where water can enter. Although the individual beads of EPS are closed cell, the voids between the beads can absorb water, which reduces the already lower in service R value of EPS. ASTM C578 tests are important to measure and quantify the properties of each material. What you see here is a demonstration of how each, Owens Corning's XPS, and EPS handle water commonly found in a one, one and a half pound material. In real world applications, insulation gets wet, but it still must perform. When EPS absorbs water, its R value actually decreases, even when tested at lower temperatures. In fact, EPS exposed to water has a lower R value at 40 degrees Fahrenheit than it does at 75 degrees Fahrenheit. This water absorption also subjects EPS to damage during the freeze-thaw cycle, which can have a negative effect on product integrity. XPS continues to have a higher R value at lower mean temperatures, even when exposed to water. In higher density EPS products, the fusion of individual beads is better than lower density EPS products, but the problem still exists. Fomular XPS features 0.3% water absorption by volume across all ASTM types, meaning potential to absorb is very unlikely. Now EPS features 2-4% water absorption by volume across all ASTM types, meaning EPS potential to absorb is 10 times greater than Fomular XPS. Resisting water is critical for high performance insulation because water is a good conductor of energy. So if water gets into the board, it lowers the thermal effectiveness of the board. Uh, water allows energy to short circuit or uh, bypass its way through the board structure and really reduces the uh, effectiveness of the insulating power. XPS, because it doesn't absorb water, doesn't have those short circuits in it. XPS is a closed cell structure and maintains its insulating power in the presence of water because water can't get into it and create those short circuits. Owens Corning's Fomular XPS Rigid Foam Insulation is well suited for multiple commercial and residential applications. So next, the insulation type is poly ISO. It is closed cell and rigid foam board insulation. The or ISO are the phased insulation. What is the, the phased insulation? It is the insulation type attaching the vapor barrier to protect the vapor movement. You can see the this the aluminum kind of a layer. It is protected the vapor movement. Okay. So anyway, we talk about the vapor movement later. But every ISO having the this the vapor barrier layer attaching over the insulation. What is about the advantage for the ISO? Its durability is really good R value. It's eight per inch. Remember about XPS, it is the five. EPS is around four. But comparing to this one, this R value is much higher. Um, also, it is create the exterior vapor barrier as a sheeting. So it means you remember about the exterior rigid insulation and adding the insulation and the waterproofing membrane and outside, inside actually you need a vapor barrier but in this case the vapor barrier actually can the over the the face of the insul ISO, ISO insulation so that's why it's kind of advantage 
but disadvantage the is much expensive than XPS and EPS. Um, also, it's not eco friendly. It's not environmentally friendly, and then it is not able to recycle. Even the EPS XPS is hard to recycle as well. So it means most insulation material is hard to recycle. But when you use an eco friendly material, which is a cellulose, but you can use. But this is a much lower R value. So it means when you're reaching the the certain R value, you have to be very thick. It required a very thick wall, the system because the, for example, this R value is A per inch, but usually like eco friendly materials, so for example, is three per inch. But when you're reaching the eight R value, you have to be four inches, right? Because the two per inch. Uh, sorry, this is have to be the yeah four inches. So it means. This is have to be more more thickness when you use eco friendly material. The problem with this reason, so we also have to be concerned about the budget. But when you consider about the eco friendly environmental material, it is always kind of a uh, questionable to us what kind of material you can use. You can think about the more efficient and cost effective material, or you can think about more the environment friendly material. Okay. Next one is the measure being heat loose. So we already talked about the conduction so and the R value, right? So conduction, what is about the conduction? It is the process of heat transfer. It is directly transmitted through the object when it has different temperature between outside and inside, which is the, this is a, the measurement of the heat loose. Okay. So again, comparing to the metal material, this is a metal, and then this one you can call it rubber, rubber pad. So you can compare it to these two material. Which one is the, the higher conduction value? The matter is higher the conduction because it is much easier to losing the heat energy through compared to rubber. Because the matter is much easier to losing the heat energy compared to compared to the rubber pad. So it means the the matter is the higher conduction value. But what is about the R value? The it is the performance of the insulation that can be measured by R value. The R value means it is the resistance of the heat value through the insulation. It means resistance. It means higher R value has the better performed system, and lower R value is the worst performed system. So it means now you're understanding about. What kind of a wall system has the better performance comparing the when you think about the conduction and R value? When you choose the insulation, you have to be choosing the, the higher R value and the low conductivity material because you protect the heat loss, right? So in this case, when you're choosing the proper the insulation, you have to be consider the conductance and the resistance together for the envelope design. Okay, I think that is very important to consider about the proper insulation layer of the, your design. So we more to talk about R value. R value is a measurement of the thermal resistance. It means the bigger number is better insulation effectiveness, which is a better performance. And then making a material thicker usually increases this value because the R value is measured by per inch. It means if you make the 4 inch, it is 4 times better performance. You can say, rule of thumb here, R value listed per inch for insulation. The double thickness of the insulation, double R value, right? So it means if you have a 4 times. 4 inch is 4 times better insulation factors. So increase the thickness, increase the thermal resistance. I think that is the important the consideration for the design. So let's watch the, this video again. I think that is kind of very well to like presenting the about R value. Okay, so we can just kind of watch this video together and then we can talk about the, the R value factors. Oh, 
Tommy, when you said we were going to use a dollhouse to talk about insulation, you didn't tell me you had an infrared camera. This is really cool. Kevin. What are you looking at? Well, actually, what I've done in a dollhouse is I've insulated half of the dollhouse. Okay. And I put some heat lamps inside. Right. So by looking through the infrared camera, you can really see the heat loss and where it is. So on this, heat is represented by the sort of orangey colors right. and cooler tempers are represented by the blue. Right. So the real bright colors, you can see wow. the windows have a tremendous amount of heat loss. Yep. On the left side, you can see the wall and the roof is really bright, so there's heat loss on that side. And so over here on this side, the roof is kind of blue, and right. so that's telling us the heat is not escaping from the right, and it's really escaping from the left? Exactly. Wow, okay. So when you guys talk about insulation, you throw around this term R value. Yes. Well, R value is actually the resistance of heat transfer through the insulation. Okay. And so when I'm thinking about how much insulation I need, what do I think about? Well, you think about two things. Where do you want to put the insulation, and what region do you live in? And when you say where, you're talking about where throughout the house? Well, whether or not you're thinking about a wall or a roof. Okay. Okay. Now, the biggest heat loss is through the roof. Right. So you can always add insulation in your attic, but it's harder to do it into the wall. So maybe I'm not adding as much to the walls as I am up to the roof. Right. And in terms of where I live? Region. All right, so let's say if you live in the warmer climate, the southern part. The R value that's required for the roof is R30. Mm -hmm. The middle of the country, R38. And the cold region up near Canada, R49. Okay. So I want to add it to the attic, and I live up in a cold region, so mm -hmm. I'm definitely going to go up to my attic, right. add some insulation. How do I know what I have up there? How much? You're going to measure it. So if you climb up into your attic, and you may have a roof truss, you may have a joy system like this, and you may have insulation lying in between the joists like that. Mm -hmm. All you need to do is take a tape measure and measure down the side of the insulation until you touch the uh, top of your plaster jo uh, ball, wall board and you measure the height of the insulation. In this case we have three and a half. Right. All right, three and a half times 3.5 per inch is an R13. So the R value of this bat of fiberglass is 3.5 per inch. Exactly. So I want to get to the region that I live in by adding insulation. That's awesome. All right, so now I know how much I've got. I can think about how much more to add. And most importantly, I can find out that you actually do have a heart. See, I do. I have a big heart. So let's talk about the R-value factors. So each material has the own R-value. You can see the concrete has the 0.08 R-value. This is per inch. And then you see the brick has the 0.2 per inch. And you can see the EPS and XPS as talked by EPS3. And then XPS has the 5 to the 5.5. And then of course vacuum is the most, the highest R-value right here. But how you consider about the proper R value for the, your design? The why not just using the highest R value for the design? So I mean you have to be choosing the proper and recommend R value and the minimum R value depending on the district. But how you getting the whole R value for the, your world design? So it means your R value is not only determined by the insulation. So when you know about the R value, you have to be add the exterior creating insulation and gypsum board and cover board, everything just kind of co the combining together and then adding the, this all R value. And then now you just kind of know about the total R value of the, your exterior wall design. Okay. So when you just kind of know about the, this R value, of course, highest R value is better. But when you're choosing the highest R value, it is usually the much higher construction cost. From this region, you have to find the proper R value of the, your design. But how you find out that this minimum R value requirement? So this is usually indicating about the, the this energy recommend R value chart here. You can see the US, the Department of the Energy, the making out the recommended or the make meaning that this minimum R value requirement from the, this table. Depending on your project location, you have to be meet the minimum R value requirement from here. You see the each zoning from one to eight. So you can just kind of zoning, you can just find out. And then, so you can just find out the attic, what kind of, what is about the, their minimum R value? And what is about the creating? What is about the minimum R value? 
and the floor what is the minimum R value that means your design have to be meet the, this minimum R value for your design okay so this is a kind of more about the R value factors it means once again R value is not just from the the insulation you have to be consider the insulation and exterior wall creating interior wall everything assembled together and then now you just know about the total R value okay so from the, this one when you know about the total R value you have to be comparing the this chart basically from the, your project location to find out the proper the wall design a proper R value for your design okay and so we watching the another the video about the extra thermal protection membrane so we just kind of watching it together and then the we discuss about the paper barrier what's going on in that house no 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 not that in the actual house well there's wall studs insulation to keep everyone comfy plywood weather resistant wrap to protect it siding on top done outside stays out inside stays in except not because wood studs let tons of energy out that's called thermal bridging and since studs make up 25 percent of a house's walls this level of energy loss is like having one entire wall uninsulated so outside gets in inside gets out energy bills go up comfort goes down but not with dupont tyvek thermowrap r5 tyvek thermowrap is a weather barrier with an r5 exterior insulation layer it installs similar to standard Tyvek home wrap and fights thermal bridging by blanketing the outside of the walls and studs with continuous insulation, which means increased R value and decreased energy bills. So rooms and wallets both stay comfortable for whatever's going on whenever. For more information, visit thermowrapr5.tyvek.com or call 1-800-44-TYVEK. So now we talk about the vapor barrier. Uh, the vapor barrier it is a little bit the little more challenging to understanding about the concept but we just talked about the, this concept and this layer step by step uh, to understanding about the vapor barrier you have to be understanding about the vapor okay the vapor it is same meaning as the moisture the vapor and moisture is the same meaning uh, air always contain the vapor and moisture right so it means you know about the air always contain the moisture which is the vapor but you have to be understanding about the uh, constant air movement through the water assembly when the vapor the meet the higher temperature it is change the water but when vapor meaning the lower temperature it is change the solid which is the the freezing uh, what's the problem when vapor the penetrating into your building assembly usually building assembly higher temperature comparing the outside because it is it has the, some insulation it means when air the passing through the this insulation the air contain the moisture and then this moisture the meaning the higher temperature it changes the liquid which is the water it means it impact to the structure and also impact the the insulation if you remember about the insulation the touch the moisture the insulation factor the performance is decreased so that's why I have a lot of a problem when the vapor the penetrating through the insulation that's why we need the vapor barrier so think about so we already discussed about what can cause the problem in the building assembly when air moving through through the, the your the building assembly the vapor change the liquid and solely depending on the temperature and impact the insulation factor and impact the structure um to understanding about the vapor and this issue you have to be understanding about the rh which is a relative humidity how can you measure the amount of the vapor okay so this is the amount the measurement which is the measured by rh which is a relative humidity RH is the amount of moisture in the air the comparing the what the what the air can hold at a certain temperature so you can just kind of simply just find out the this meaning here RH is the amount of the water vapor the present in air expressed as a percentage of amount needed the saturation at the same temperature so it means RH value it is amount of the vapor it's amount 
of the vapor. So this is a uh, the measurement tool, the tool of the vapor amount. Okay. So how you can using the some RH value? You better to understanding about the, this concept. The RH value you can see, which is relative humidity, is the amount of moisture in the air, which is the amount of the the vapor in the air. It's always fixed it because the air is always fixed in the in the space. So that's why the amount of vapor in the air is fixed it. However, it will be changed the maximum vapor amount which can hold in the air at a certain temperature. It can be higher temperature how much the vapor is included and then lower temperature how much better, better the vapor and moisture in the room. So from this one the overall amount of the water hasn't changed. Okay, this part is hasn't changed. But maximum amount of water the vapor air can hold has the the change. So usually higher temperature having the more vapor and the lower temperature is less vapor. You simply understanding from the this example. You can just go into the hot area. It is usually the higher the which is humid is which is because it is the, the air contain the more vapor. But when you doing when you stay in the winter, which is cold area, which is a lower temperature, it is dried usually. It means because it is the less the moisture in the air. So like a humid area, hot and humid area, more vapor, so mo more moisture, and then the cold and the the raw temperature, it is dried. It means less vapor and less the moisture in the air. So it means the amount of the vapor in the air, it is fixed it, but depending on the the temperature, the the vapor amount which can hold it is always change. It means higher temperature is more vapor, so it means this is a more vapor. In this case, higher temperature is more vapor. It means it has the lower RH value. However, if you have lower temperature is less vapor, it means it be less vapor. It means lower ba lower temperature has the higher RH value. Okay because it is the inverse inverse proportion so when it the top part is fixed it and then when it's high and then this is a lower and then when it's low and then when it's high okay and then just kind of talk one more time about the, this situation when temperature is high which is more vapor it means the maximum amount of water vapor air it can be higher it means RH value can be lower because the this is the inverse relations. So also evaporation of the water is rapid because the higher temperature is more vapor is kind of a they try to getting out of the water from the this air. So that's why evaporation of the water is rapid. But what about the temperature lower? So it means lower temperature is less dry because you can giving the same example in a dry condition in the the winter and then this one you can consider about the humid the in the summer right so means you can just think about the, this one when you have a lower temperature like that it has the less vapor you can have a less vapor, in this case less paper. What is about the RH value? RH value is higher. Okay? But also evaporation of the water is slower because it contains less paper and less moisture. So this is a kind of question here. If you lower in the temperature, what is about the relative humidity? The lower in the temperature, you can see the lower in the temperature here from the higher temperature the lower in the temperature so it means temperature is lowering it means temp the moisture and vapor is reduced it so it means it can be reduced it so it has the higher RH value right because it's the inverse impact so I think about the, this is a basic consideration you can simply understand about the, this diagram the water vapor in the room in the, in the air is always fixed it you can see this is already fixed it However, 
the higher temperature you can see higher temperature has the more vapor so you can see the yellow one is more vapor so it means comparing to yellow one and then the blue one so you can have a the if you have a higher temperature it means the ratio of RH is the lower but when you decrease it and then this case is the, the the amount of the vapor in the air and the maximum vapor amount which can hold in the air in the 10 degrees Celsius it is same in this case you have a hundred percent RH value so it means simply understanding about when you lowering the temperature um, RH value is increased the base grip from the this the the formula and that this formula also have to be understanding about the, these two system okay so I just kind of uh, summarize this issue one more time okay I can erase first I think you need to be understanding about this concept okay so here now okay so let's see so when you starting from this one when temperature low low condition have a less vapor because the you just think about the dried in the winter condition is so because it contains the less the moisture in this case the less vapor when you temperature lower okay but when you have in the temperatures lower but uh, we always consider about the amount of the vapor in the air which is the air vapor water vapor in the certain air is fixed it so means when the the maximum vapor amount which can hold in the air at the lower temperature is less vapor which is lower so means RH value is higher right but so when temperature higher which is the high temperature is humid you can consider but humid in the summer it is more vapor right so means it's already fixed it so more vapor in the this part it means RH value is lower okay you can understanding about the, this the concept from the, this diagram so water vapor here this amount of the vapor in the air is so fixed it but when you have in the 30 degrees Celsius and 20 degrees Celsius 30 degrees Celsius is higher temperature it means it has the more vapor of course you can save a more vapor in a higher temperature the 20 degrees is less vapor because of the lower temperature so it means comparing to yellow and blue comparing to yellow and blue here so this one is has to be lower temperature because a lower RH value because this one is here and the yellow one is the bottom so you can just simply calculating it you understanding about 30 degrees Celsius has the lower temperature but when you're lowering the temperature you can actually increase the RH value which is a vapor the amount you just understanding about the this concept then now just kind of watching the the next video it is very good summary video to talk about the RH value just kind of understanding about the, the concept and then summarize the, this RH value concept from the, this video now after that we just discuss about the dew point and condensation Hi, I'm Ian Cole, the Technical Director of the Indoor Air Quality Association bringing you an IAQA tech tip on relative humidity you're probably very familiar with the term relative humidity. You may even regularly measure relative humidity. But do you know how to define relative humidity? It turns out that the definition of relative humidity is quite complex. It's defined as the partial pressure of water vapor divided by saturation vapor pressure times 100. <laughs> it doesn't roll off the tongue too easily, does it? Let me quickly pick apart this definition, starting with the partial pressure of water vapor. The partial pressure of water vapor is directly related to the number of water molecules present. So think of the partial pressure of water vapor as being another way of measuring the amount of humidity in the air. Right now in this room, the partial pressure of water vapor is 0.4 inches of mercury. If that's in the numerator, What's in the denominator? Well, that's the saturation vapor pressure. There's a limit to the amount of water molecules that you can find in the air in a room. 
The saturation vapor pressure is related to the maximum number of molecules that can be in the air for the given conditions. Right now, the saturation vapor pressure in this room is 0.8. Why is this room limited to 0.8? The limit is a function of energy. If we increase the temperature, more water vapor molecules can be in the air. If we decrease the temperature, fewer water vapor molecules can be in the air. So let's bring it all together. We divide the partial pressure of water vapor, which is 0.4 in this room, divided by the saturation vapor pressure, 0.8 in this room, and multiply this number by 100. If you do the math correctly, you should come up with 50%. Here's the great thing. You can buy a simple device that tells you the relative humidity without ever needing to worry about vapor pressures. Remember that relative humidity is the amount of water vapor in the air divided by the maximum possible amount, which is a function of temperature. If you'd like to learn more about relative humidity and its effect on indoor air quality, consider taking the one-hour online class titled Introduction to Psychrometrics in the IAQA University. Visit iaqa.org for more information. I think now we better understanding about the RH value. But we just talk about the dew point. What is about the dew point? So when you're understanding about the dew point, understand the, you have to understand the RH value. So when RH value reaches to the 100%, it begins to generating, generating the condensation. What is about the condensation? And what is about the dew point? And what is meaning about the RH value reached to the 100%? Uh, when RH value, which is uh, reaching to the 100% RH value, it is called as the dew point. And the dew point has to be in, has been reached 100% RH value. Okay, so what is meaning about that part? So you just kind of simply understanding from the this tab, I mean this graph here. So you can just see amount of vapor in the air was really fixed it. But the maximum vapor amount is kind of changing depending on the temperature. It is understanding from the this diagram here. So it means when you lowering down the your temperature, and then it means the maximum vapor amount is decreased, right? So you can understand about here. This is a 90 degree, and then this is a zero degree. And then when you actually lowering down the temperature, you remember lowering down temperature means less vapor. So means it will be higher RH value. So means when you're lowering down and then RH value is increased. Okay. And then when you increased and then reaching up to the hundred percent, it means the maximum vapor amount and the amount of vapor in the air, it is same amount, which is the here, you can see the 10 degree Celsius. So when lowering down the temperature, the maximum vapor amount is the decrease. And then eventually they just kind of having same value between the maximum vapor amount and amount of the vapor. When you just kind of uh, having the same amount, it is the reaching to the hundred percent the RH value. It is called as the dew point. Okay, so it means when you exceed the dew point, the vapor change to the water. Okay, so it means vapor was containing in the in the air but when the vapor changes the water when it becomes to the lowering the temperature is your understanding about the point so it means even higher temperature and then this is a lower temperature so air just moving from higher temperature to lower temperature because higher temperature has more vapor and the lower temperature is less vapor it means the air try to balance the vapor between the more vapor and less vapor. That's why they provide vapor to the less vapor area. So it means when you decrease the temperature, actually the vapor and air the moving from the the higher temperature to the lower temperature. So in this case, you can understand about the point. When you mean higher temperature during the winter time, this is a lower temperature. It means this is outside and then this is the inside, right? So it means air always moving from higher temperature to the lower temperature. It means air just moving from inside to the outside. So in this case, air containing the, the vapor, it means vapor, so when you actually decrease the air, like from here to here, you can decrease the air, 
it means RH value is increased and then when you reach to the 40 degree here and then it, it has the 100% dew point but when you exceed, exceed this dew point this air the change to the water and this water we can say the condensation okay so this is a kind of concept why air the change to the water because air always containing the vapor but this air the drop the temperature and then it is the the meeting the dew point which is the amount of vapor in the air and the maximum vapor amount is same but when it exceeding the dew point it changed the moisture the change the water and then this water we can call it as condensation so i just kind of giving the better example so during the winter time you drive in a car and the inside is hot and outside is cold so you just understanding we already discussed air always moving higher temperature to the lower temperature because higher temperature contain the more vapor and more moisture more moisture so that's why they just kind of flowing from the higher temperature to lower temperature in the car inside is higher temperature and outside lower temperature it means this higher temperature moving from inside to the outside but we have a window here but this higher temperature touching the window window is kind of a cold because it's exposed to the outside it means this hot air just touching the window and then the temperature is lowering down it means rh value is increased and then eventually they just kind of meeting the 100% RH value which is a dew point but when you exceed it so it becomes to the vapor change the water so that's why the surface of the window inside you can see the water during the winter time it's because about the this hot air touching the this window side which is the exposed to the lower temperature this uh, this water we can call it as the vapor we can call this the condensation okay i think that is kind of a good example to understanding about uh, this dew point and condensation okay vapor barrier actually the protect this condensation into the your water assembly because when condensation happening into the your insulation it is impacted the, your insulation performance it also impact the structure okay so let's watching the the video together so this one is introducing about the RH value and then it's, it's good summary video to talk about the RH value. So when you watching this video together and then jumping to talk about the more vapor barrier type. So as we discussed, air is moving from the higher temperature to the lower temperature, right? Because higher temperature has more vapor, the lower temperature is less vapor. They just try to balance out the, between the these two different the amount of the vapor. So when you just think about the cold climate, 
which is uh, indoor usually the higher temperature and outside usually lower temperature. So in from this region, the cold climate, always the vapor just moving from the inside to the outside. It means air just kind of moving from the indoor to the outdoors. And when this indoor, which is the low, the more vapor, just meaning the this the lower the the vapor surface. It is kind of meaning the it, when this is meaning the surface, and then it decreases the the temperature. It means Rh value is increased. So it means when Rh value increases to the hundred percent, and then we can call it is as the dew point. And over the dew point, it is the vapors change to the water. So this water we can say the condensation. Okay. So this is I just kind of summarized. As vapor migrate through the wall assembly, it may reach the dew point and then condense within the wall. So this is a kind of a major issue. So that's why we propose the vapor barrier design. So you can just say the higher temperature, lower temperature, the temperature drop, and then you can just vapor is moving from here to here because the higher temperature, lower temperature, is so more vapor to the less vapor. And then the RH value rises to the 100% because about the, when you're lowering down is less vapor, it means it's increased the RH value. And then this is what we can call the dew point and then exceed that part and then it makes the condensation, right? So what is, you can see that that's why you can see that this condensation over the window and then when it actually coming into the assemblage, it actually impacted your insulation factors. So that's why it just decreased the, the insulation performance. So how we can solution, how we can solve in the, this issue through the, your world system. So now we just need, need to be designing the vapor barrier. So you remember about the cold climate, the outdoor usually lower temperature, indoor usually higher temperature, which is more vapor to the less vapor, the vapor moving from here to here. But how we can actually protect the, these, the movement and flowing? So this condensation is caused the uh, like a damage of the insulation. That's why you have to be protected of this the air movement. But this is have to be considering about the different treatment depending on the the climate zone. The the cold climate. So in this cold climate condition, you remember about the indoor usually higher temperature and outdoor outdoor usually lower temperature. So means the more vapor in the higher temperature, less vapor in lower temperature. So it means air moving from the inside to the outside. So in this case, where you need to be protect the air movement inside or outside. In this case, your vapor barrier have to be locating inside. But I just kind of sometimes ask you to design the vapor barrier. Someone just throw it outside, but it doesn't work. Someone throw it here, it doesn't work. You have to be if you having if you want to make in the better performance, you have to be adding the this vapor barrier in, inside of the your the system, which is the into the 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 framing system. Okay, so means when you having the vapor barrier here uh, in the cold climate condition, actually you can just kind of protect the condensation the, this layer to protect the the this insulation. But what about the hot climate? condition hot climate outdoor usually higher temperature and indoor usually lower temperature because the indoor usually having the air conditioning and outdoor is higher temperature it means higher temperature is more vapor and the lower temperature less vapor air just moving from outside to the inside in this case where you need to adding the vapor barrier in this case you have to be adding the vapor barrier dislocation to protect air movement from the the outside to the inside to protect the condensation and protect the the insulation inside okay what about the moderate climate condition indoor and outdoor has the very similar temperature in this case you don't need the vapor barrier because it doesn't have any air movement too much because it's similar temperature outside and inside Okay. But how you know about the where is the moderate climate, where is the hot climate, where is the cold climate in US? You can just kind of notify the this map 
the this zone is the cold climate and then this is a moderate climate and then this is a hot climate depending on the, your project location you have to be choosing the proper location of the your the vapor barrier in interior side or exterior side okay also when you're designing about the, this one you just kind of an indoor and uh, higher temperature and outdoor and the cold climate in this case you protect the the vapor barrier here but people say just kind of doing the two vapor barrier inside and outside but what is the problem here so when even air always kind of moving even if a small hole over the this vapor barrier sometimes the air just passing through but you heading the op it has to open you have to be the getting out of the vapor as much as possible it mostly protect here but small hole it also the passing through the air so that's why when you have in the vapor barrier both side the water actually trap inside of the your insulation it's, it's hard to escaping from here so from the, this region we usually only having the one side vapor barrier rather than two okay but also have to be concerned about the vapor barrier considered using the breathable material okay so means you can just kind of see the three different the vapor barrier type the class one, the, which is the non-impermeable the vapor barrier, the class two, which is the semi-impermeable, and the class three, which is the permeable material. But you can just kind of using the either you can use in class one, class two, or class three. But just kind of think about each using the impermeable material for the the both condition. The air is trapped into the, your assembly. The problem with this region, you have to be choosing the proper, the vapor barrier type depending on the, your project. So it means also depending on the climate zone, it is recommend the different types about the vapor barrier. Okay, you can just using the, the this paper type, or you can just using the, the vapor barrier over the insulation, or also you can just kind of consult using the aluminum foil type or this kind of the like a binary type but this is a kind of impermeable and this is the most permeable so you might consider about the what kind of uh, the vapor barrier is better to use for the, your design but you just say the permeable it means air is not passing through what is about the permeable mean it's like a gore tex the fabric the air actually can move protecting from here but when you actually chance to get in the air it means the some the water in this case, this is a breathable material and permeable material. It means it is getting out of the water and moisture from the inside to the outside. It still protects the air and water, but when you having the the moisture inside, even sometimes happening that this moisture inside about the the insulation. In this case, the when you're using the permeable, it's easy to getting out of the moisture from the inside of the assemblage to the outside. So that's why. From my perspective, I prefer to use the permeable and in the semi-permeable the vapor barrier rather than the impermeable material. Okay, but this is a, all about the, depending on the project. It has a different requirement and a different request for the the choosing the vapor barrier, right? So thank you so much for the today's lecture. So we mostly discuss about the insulation and vapor barrier and they talk about the where is the vapor barrier located and then what kind of insulation you need to use and then how you actually consider about the R value and con R value and conductiveness to choosing the proper R value and proper insulation. So we just kind of discuss about the basic the concept of insulation and the vapor barrier. So you just need to be understanding also what is the difference between the vapor barrier and waterproof membrane. Waterproof membrane just protect the, the direct water, actual water from the snow or rain. But vapor barrier have to be protect the moisture, moisture contained in the air. So always kind of a air moving from the higher temperature, low temperature. So means the vapor barrier, the depending on the climate zone, it is located in a different way. But when you're having the two side vapor barrier inside of your assemblage, the vapor have sometimes happening from the insulation, it is trapped into the, your assemblage. It's hard to getting out of your assemblage. From the this region, it's highly recommended as one side 
the vapor barrier. Okay, so this is kind of most our summary. Okay, today you guys keep going on the your the the rep two assignment. Okay, but if you have uh, any question relating to the the lecture, please stay here and then we can talk through the Zoom. All right, or you if you want to meeting with me in a person, please let me know. I can just meeting you guys in a class. Right. So thank you so much.